Form 1A of the project approval form is the student checklist form. This is the second form that is required for all projects regardless of the field of study. This form asks for basic information about the student, researcher, the project, and the school. For individual projects, the student's name, grade, email address, and phone number are required. For team projects, it is important to note that there, are, there is a maximum of three members per project. It is encouraged that uh, the team designate a team leader who's going to provide, again, the grade, the email, and the phone number. The other two members should just provide their names. Also, it is important to note that there should only be one project approval form per project. While Intel ISEF has minimal restrictions on who can form teams, the local regional fair that we belong to, which is the Science and Engineering Fair of Houston, actually has a ninth grade division and a senior division, which is the 10th to 12 graders. And they require that ninth graders be teamed with only ninth graders, while 10 graders to 12 graders can team up in any grade level. Furthermore, your classroom teacher may have additional guidelines as to whom you can team up with. For instance, he or she may only allow you to team up with his students or her students or even with only your classmates in the same period. So, bottom line is, make sure you consult your teacher first if you plan to uh, work in teams. The title of the project should be the same as what is written in Form 1. Do not forget to complete all the information required in Number 3. Your school is Hightower High School. And the school phone is 281-634-5204. Finally, the school address is 3333 Hurricane Lane, Missouri City, Texas 77459. Item number 4 requires the adult sponsor's name who should be the same as the person who filled up Form 1. You should also give his or her phone and email address. Question number 5 asks if this project is a continuation project from previous years. If you answer no, then you can proceed to number 6. But if you answer yes, then you have to check yes and then answer A and B. You need to make sure that you provide the abstract from the previous year and the research plan from the previous year. Also, you will need to fill up form number 7. Now we come to the most important item in this form, which is item number 6. It is very critical that you pay attention to these dates. The start date refers to the actual date that you started the experiment, the actual experimentation. The end date refers to the actual date you ended the experimentation. Since these are actual start dates and end dates for your actual experiment, this should be left blank when you submit the project approval form the first time for approval. Intel ISEF rules and guidelines stipulates that all projects must be approved prior to the experiment being performed. Therefore, this start date has to be after the project has been approved. There is a certain process that we follow for project approvals. There's a timeline and deadlines that we have set and it's not an overnight process so you should factor that in when doing your own timeline for when you want to start the experiment and when you anticipate to finish it. While waiting for approval it's possible for you to start gathering the materials you're gonna need for performing the experiment. The only thing is that you will not be able to start actually performing the experiment until you receive approval of your experiment. Item number seven requires that you specify all the locations where you'll be performing the experiment. 
other than school, any other location like research institution, field, home, or anything else like business establishment or anything like that, you will have to fill up number 8 as well. Note that certain experiments can only perform in certain locations. For example, if you're going to be doing tissue culture or microbial culturing, um, this cannot be performed at home. Instead, you can only perform it in a location that's actually certified as BSL-1. For instance, your school or a research institution. If you have any questions on where you can perform an experiment, please ask your science teacher or your science fair coordinator. The last two items, item 9 and item 10, are simply reminders that these two forms should be included in your project approval form packet. Please take note that number 10, the abstract, is only required after you perform the experiment. Please check out the presentation on how to create an abstract.